Hey guys, I have Kevin Dorsey here with me. Katie, what's up? Oh, you know, my man, just living my best life as best I can. What else can I do? Hell yeah. Um, Kevin is master in sales. Um, and we found out each other through, um, he wrote something on, on LinkedIn about how so many people don't understand sales. And that's why... Uh, they have preconceptions about that, and they don't like sales. And I was just like that up until about eight years ago when it was either I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a sale or I'm not going to eat tonight. I learned how to love sales. I understood exactly what is a sale and why it's a good thing and not a bad thing, right? Mm-hmm. So tell me a little bit, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, you're doing amazing stuff. Oh, um, man, about, about myself, you know, I am a son, a brother, a father, a husband. Um, really, I'm big into self-development and self-care in addition to, you know, my profession, which is sales. And I try to cross, really, you know, cross those a lot. You know, a lot of people tend to forget about the person in salesperson. They only focus on the sales side. And so I really tried to, to blend that. And I think that's why I've seen some success in my career. I've gone from, you know, selling knives door to door in college. I don't even know if I can call it selling because no one really bought from me. So <laughs> I tried to sell in college to now, you know, running, you know, 100 person sales teams, bringing in, you know, millions upon millions of dollars per year. Um, it's been a fun journey, but I think that's been a big part of that journey is taking care of people and focusing on the person. And that's kind of allowed me to, you know, it was like succeed, but I think succeed the right way, you know, like not getting to the top by stepping on people, but getting to the top by lifting people. Um, yeah. So that's kind of my story and what, what I believe in. Why do you think people hate sales so much or hate sales persons? So it's actually relatively simple why they don't trust us mm -hmm. they don't trust salespeople, and the reason for that is because the sales industry has built itself in a way to cause salespeople to do untrustworthy things right mm -hmm. the moment that you talk to anybody even if this was family or friends and you know there's a motivation behind why they're trying to get you to do something that trust is broken yeah. And now you no longer have a strong connection with that individual. So then combine that with just decades of really shady salespeople. Yeah. Like we, we made our own bed here, right? The sales industry made its own bed. We caused this. And now it's going to be a long journey back to see if we can get that trust from the consumers back. I think that, you know, at, at least for me and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, with the way that I look at that. For me, I was a marketing guy for like 20 years. And I was like, I'm not a sales guy. I'm a marketing guy. It's deeper. I'm not here just to tell people to buy and buy and buy. And then I understood that it's not about me at all. And it's not about making the sale or close the deal. It's about making this consumer or customer smile. And if they smile, if I help them have a better day, they will happily pay as much as I ask. And I asked sometimes a lot of money and they just paid it because it's not about the price. It's about this connection. It's about understanding mm -hmm. that, okay, yeah, yeah, that's, that's actually what I wanted, what I need, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's this, there's this common phrase where they say, people don't like to be sold, but they love to buy. Yeah. And I actually disagree with that because when you deal with a great salesperson, how do you feel? Like when you deal with a great salesperson, it's actually an enjoyable experience. Right. Like you enjoy it. You actually have more confidence in your buy. In fact, you generally buy something better for you because you had an expert along the way. Like, People don't mind being sold. What they don't like is being pushed. And yeah. there's a big difference, right? Like or being to your lied point, to. Oh, yeah. Like once you lie, it's over, right? Yeah. Once you withhold information, 
it's over. When you dance around what the prospect is answer, asking you, it's over, right? But like, if you, one, treat them like a person, which, you know, salespeople talk about prospects. They don't talk about people enough, right? B to B sales, B to C sales. Everything yeah. is B to P sales. It's yeah. a person <laughs> that's buying from you. Like, exactly. that's it. And so if we remembered that and you connect with the person and then actually solve a problem for that person, right? Like actually make their world better to your point, sales can be a lot of fun for both sides, the salesperson and the buyer. So what do you think uh, is the best sales process or even before that prospecting? For instance, I get so many people, and I'm sure that you do, and I'm sure that many of the people who watch and listen to this right now get a lot of those messages on LinkedIn. We will get you 30 leads in a week, and I don't need leads. I need people that want to work with me. I, you know, mm -hmm. anyone can get leads. So what do you think is the best process? I mean, let's say someone who is like, you know what? I'm going to start my own business right now. I need to do my own sales. I've never done any sales. I want to help people and give them from my knowledge. So what would you say is the best process to do that? So what I believe is the best process is problem-based selling, not product-based selling, mm -hmm. right? So all of those people that were reaching out to you, they're talking about the product. We're going to go get you 30 more leads. We're going to go make you more money. We're going to save you time. It's all in the future, right? And any promises of the future, people don't believe, right? Like it, we're not future-based creatures. Humans right. are now-based creatures. Like we think about the future, but we don't generally do what we're supposed to about it. But if you talk about the problem, if you know the problem that your product solves and you lead with that, right? You, you know, you reach out to, to me and say, hey, Katie, you're a VP of sales. I know a lot of VPs really struggle to keep a pulse on what their team is doing now that things are remote. Do you struggle with that at all? Or do you have it pretty much dialed in? Let me know. Now you're leading with the problem, Perfect. right? And if I say, then also, by the way, I'll give you the psychology here. It works both ways. Because if I say, no, I don't struggle with that. You know what people love to talk about them about themselves. So I say, no, like I don't struggle with that. And I respond back and go, holy cow, like, what are you doing? Like, how, how do you have this figured out? Yeah. Well, now I'm going to talk about myself a little bit and it's probably going to expose a problem or the flip side. Well, no, like, yeah, I struggle with that a little bit. What you're trying to get them to wonder is, well, what do you do? It's like, well, I might be able to fix that. Could we have a conversation? So lead with the problem. Talk about the problems your prospect has, not what your product can do. And so many founders and early business owners, they're so in love with the product because yeah. it's their baby, right? It's their baby. They built it. It was their idea that they lose sight of the problems they're solving. And that's why no one resonates. Right. That, that, that's probably the best process. Problem-based selling is better than anything else out there. That's so true. And in my branding and marketing, it's something that I always tell people uh, because usually I, I help and consult the, the founder or the CEO. And I always tell them, you're too close to the product. Yeah. Nobody cares about your product. Oh, it's hard, hard for them to it. hear. And it's so like, hard for what? them to hear. And I'm like, it, that's the truth. Once you start focusing on them and not about your product, wow things will change and i'm like you know what let's just try this and then they see that it works you know i take their team and poof, all of a sudden oh we didn't talk about ourselves in this newsletter we talked about yeah. the customers and all of a sudden you know it works yep um that's good you know i have to ask that how do you sell while coveting I mean, do you think that something has changed? I know that from a marketing point of view and branding point of view, a lot has changed. Mm -hmm. What about sales? Is the process the same, you think? Or we need to change something? So it depends on what process you're using. If you're using a problem-based process, 
the process doesn't change, but the messaging does because your prospects have new problems now. If you are still trying to sell with the old value prop and you don't understand how your prospects world has changed, that's where the disconnect is, right? So, you know, I'm a VP of sales. I have an almost hundred person sales team that over the past 65 days, I went from in office 90% of the time to out of office a hundred percent of the time. Yeah. My challenges are different now. And so that's what we did even at patient pop, my, my company, the problem we used to solve for our doctors was not seeing enough patients or not seeing the right patients. Those were the two problems. Now notice, I didn't say get more patients or get better patients. I said yeah. not getting enough or not seeing the right, right? So those are the first two levels. But then what happened with COVID is they couldn't see any patients, right? Right. Shelter in place, stay at home. They couldn't even see any patients. So now the problem is different. So if I'm calling them and saying, hey, a lot of doctors don't see enough patients or the right patients. Does that sound like your world? They're like, what are you talking about? Like, I can't see anyone, <laughs> right? So their problem changed. So, so did our messaging. Hey, we know doctors all around the country right now are scrambling to find a way to see patients. We're rolling out a telehealth product that will allow you to see patients without them coming into the office. Is that a problem you'd be interested in maybe looking into solving? Yeah. Now we're right back to what we talked about before. Either they're going to say, well, yeah, I'd be interested in solving that. Or they say no. And we can go, that's amazing. Like, how are you seeing patients right now? And they go, oh, well, you know, we're calling them on FaceTime. Oh, geez. Like, so, you know, FaceTime's not HIPAA compliant, right? Like that, that could maybe open you up to something. Like we might have a solution that'll let you do what you're doing, but better. Like, could I show it to you? The problem changed. The process was the same. The messaging changed because of the problem changed. Amazing. It's, it's, it's just amazing. I, I, I totally love it. And this whole focus about solving a problem is, you know, it works. Now, you know, these days, uh, a lot of the people, you know, they don't work in the office. So if you have their phone number at the office, it's really hard to get them. Most of them, you know, and talk, getting someone on the phone, it's harder than ever. Uh, people prefer to get an email or a message. How do you see all this uh, cold outreach? Do you prefer phone calls, emails, uh, messages on LinkedIn? Do you think that there's any difference or because your approach is specific, you don't really care what the media is? So it's a little bit of a blend. So Jeb Blount talked about this in his book, Fanatical Prospecting, which is something I recommend anyone in sales read. He said, when it comes to prospecting, you need an and mentality, not an or mentality. Right. So it's not call or email or social or direct mail or video. It's right. call and email and social and direct mail and video. You have to be everywhere. And people have forgotten really what the point of prospecting is. The point of prospecting is to build awareness and curiosity, not interest. I'll say that again. Prospecting is for awareness and curiosity. You can tell the people that are trying to build interest in their prospecting, right? Hey, can we find a time to talk? Hey, can we find it? Like it's, it's too direct. But if you got two emails from me, you've seen my name a couple of times, and then I connect with you on LinkedIn and you accept. Then I send a video to you on LinkedIn. And then I send you another email. And then all of a sudden the phone rings Right. And I told you, and this is a little trick, by the way, if you put in your emails, the number you're going to be calling from, oftentimes Apple starts to suggest, have you seen this? When like you call right. and it says, it might be Kevin Dorsey. It's because it's gone through your emails and yeah. it's kind of, pro so now you see my name pop up there. 
right? And so it's being everywhere your prospect is. But back to what we were talking about before, messaging matters more than channel. If you have a bad message, it doesn't matter. Yeah. If, you, if you're hawking your product, it doesn't matter if you're calling or emailing or video or social, the message will kill it. If you have a good message, your industry will tell you what they prefer, right? They'll tell you what they prefer based off their actions. Right. And this is something I don't think enough people in sales talk about because it's such an old school way of thinking. Sales prefers to get people on the phone. Yeah. That's what sales prefers. You already said it. What do prospects prefer? Does anyone like getting cold called? Do you no. like getting cold called? No. I'm a sales no guy. I don't like getting cold called. Right. Right. But no one teaches their reps how to send good emails. Yeah. It's nope. hard. Right. It, it is hard. It is hard. But it can be taught. Right. It can be taught. And you can do it much better. And that makes your calls better. Right. So I'm omni channel, but I'm strong on message. Get the message right. You're going to be everywhere. Your prospect. I mean, we go so far. I have emails that are designed to get a click. They're not designed to get a response. All I want is the click. Yeah. Because if I can get the click, now you're going to see my marketing ads everywhere. So now I'm calling, I'm emailing, I'm videoing, I'm social. And you see my ads on Facebook and Instagram on your Google display. I'm everywhere. And all those things are talking about the problem. So you're sending an email with a click and then when they click, they go where to, to see an ad, to see a video or something, and then it's re retargeting them. Yep. So it's either a video, it's getting them to our website, to a blog article that we know is relevant to what they like their industry, yeah. right? Comparisons like, well, I'm just, man, if I can just get you to a place, just get you to a place where I can drop that cookie. Now I can follow you everywhere. Yeah. And you're now you're going to stay. And that's all of a sudden when someone's like, I wonder what patient pop does. And they start to Google, right? Yeah. And they're not quite sure why, right? Or you see the email come from me and you delete it, but you're like, what is this patient pop thing? Now you're go now I'm, I'm, I'm in there, right? right? That's, that's the goal of it all. So two questions. First of all, if we're talking about emailing and messaging, I know that you're a big advocate, just like me, uh, for the first sentence. Yes. Everything is like, you have, I, you know, I call it the, uh, the elevator pitch when I talk to clients. What's your elevator pitch? Just tell me in one short sentence, what do you do? Because the elevator is fucking crashing down. Mm -hmm. And if they can't, they lost everything. And in an email, the first sentence is everything, right? Almost. The first sentence is everything with getting the email opened. Right. Right. So that's, that's the, the first sentence what gets the email open. So the first sentence is actually, can I get it open? Can I build enough curiosity for them to open that email, right? So the goal of the first sentence is to get it opened and to get it read. So mm -hmm. I actually don't put the value prop in the first sentence. I right. put something in there that's going to make you want to know what the rest of the email says, right? But then if you look at most of our emails, we don't talk about us until the end. Yeah. 80% of that email is about you and your problems that you right. probably face as our prospect or our persona, right? So it's actually funny. I keep this here, right? Like I have my like vision board stuff. So there's a card here, right? And I don't know if people can see this as be on video, but I help blank the market achieve blank desire without having to blank hate by method, not product. I keep this here all day long to remind myself of how we're supposed to talk about what we do, right? There's no product on here. There's yeah. no nothing. This is so when people ask like with sales, what do I do? Well, I help salespeople achieve higher commission checks and quota attainment without having to run themselves in the ground and be shit, you know, sketchy salespeople by following a problem based sales process that works. Right. I help doctors see more of the right patients for their practice without having to spend thousands on paid ads and marketing agencies by providing an all-in-one solution that controls their reputation, 
their website and their patient communication. Yeah. Like th- I keep this here. It's right on my board as a reminder of what and how we should talk about what we do. You call it, I think, the 2 a.m. sentence or something. Yeah. And I call it yep. the elevator. So it's the same thing. My company help them, them do or achieve or feel. I, I'm, I'm a huge emotion. Love it. You know, how they want to feel. Katie, where can people get uh, a little bit more of your knowledge? Hey, you know, so LinkedIn is my only social channel. So I don't have Twitter, Instagram, or Snap, or TikTok, or wherever mm-hmm. people are. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn pretty much every day. I also just launched a private um, Patreon community called Inside Sales Excellence that really dives in a little bit more in depth than you can do on you know, LinkedIn, it's 1300 characters. Like I'm putting trainings and courses and like webinars and stuff in there. So find me on LinkedIn or find me on Patreon and I'm, I'm doing my best to share the good word as best I can. That's super awesome. Thank you so much, Katie. And I'll see you soon. Awesome. Thanks, man.